some lots of fun pictures on what that office can look like. So hopefully um, that's something that you uh, like find inspirational. So yeah, very good. So Anita, I'll wait yep. for you. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and start. I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone um, except for Karen, and then we will go ahead and get started. All right. All right. And so, and we are recording this, right, Anita? Yes. Uh, so has started. We will uh, put this on our YouTube page. So if you've got friends or family who you think that this might be helpful for, or if you want to review and take a look at what we've got, you can go ahead and check it out on YouTube. And we'll have that at the end of our, and you know, what's our, um, our YouTube address? Um, it's very difficult because we don't have enough people following us yet. So follow us. Um, the easiest way to get to our YouTube channel is to go to our website and on the homepage, scroll all the way down to the bottom and there's our YouTube icon and you just click on that and it will take you to the YouTube channel or you can find the YouTube channel on our Facebook page. Yeah, very good. All right, thank you. Okay, and actually tonight, uh, so we're gonna be talking about how to create a productive and inspiring home office uh, since the landscape of our life have changed so much. Um, it's, you know, we've got a new normal here. Hopefully this new normal won't last for really long, but I, I do think that a lot of employers are gonna say, hey, if my employees can be productive at home, um, why not entertain the idea of giving them some flexibility to be working from home a couple of days a week or, or maybe virtually uh, permanently. But with that though, sometimes, you know, when we're working at home and we're on conference call after conference call, or maybe it's your home office and you do some other work, one of the things that can happen to us too is we just get stuck sitting at our desk and working and working. And if you're like me, you're a workaholic and I've got to remember to get up to go to the bathroom. I'm not taking the time to stretch and loosen up my muscles. I'm in this kind of position, you know, working on my computer. So we've got Jill Eggert, and you might be able to see her picture there. So we've got Jill. Um, is Jill is a personal trainer and a movement specialist, and she's been I've known Jill for 30 years, <laughs> and so I've known her for a long time. She. And actually, she was kind of a pioneer in starting virtual workouts. So she and I got, what, eight, ten years ago or so, yeah. um, virtual workouts when I moved from the Chicagoland area to the Des Moines area. And I wanted to keep up with my fitness program. Jill was there to help me. But she's here tonight to actually show us some um, some stretches that we can do to make sure that we're not getting hunched over and causing ourselves more physical damage just by sitting in a chair all day. So. Jill's going to show us the ABCs of stretching and movement, and we'll do that at the end of the hour um, because we'll have been sitting for about 45 minutes or so, and that'll give us a good chance to get up, get moving, get the heart rate going, and Jill's going to kind of talk through some of those, uh, the wonderful aspects of moving, especially now more than ever with the corona out there, and they've talked about nutrition is important, you know, having a good, you know, good focus, good mind, um, but then also physical movement is so important besides keeping ourselves protected from the germs that are out there. So we'll talk about that in a little bit, but all right, we will go ahead. I'm going to um, share my screen and if I can get my mouse to the right spot here. There we go. I am going to share my screen with everybody. So, okay. So can everybody see this? If yep. You're good. Okay. All right. Okay. So actually, we're creating a productive and inspiring home office here. We'll talk a little bit about um, who is Miller Design Group and decorating den interiors. Then we're going to talk about creating a productive and inspirational workspace. Then Jill's going to share with us the ABCs of stretching and movement. And then we're going to tie it all together and then have some Q&A. So if you've got some questions, feel free to um, go ahead and either type those into the chat or save those to the end. We'll go ahead and we'll talk about that then. All right, so a little bit about who we are. We're a Miller Design Group. We're located in the Des Moines area, but we, um, we actually have clients in, in different states and throughout the country, but our primary focus is the Des Moines Metro. And how we work is actually, 
we like to have our first initial consultation with our clients. We meet with you face to face and it's a complimentary, um, complimentary cons consultation where we come in and we talk to you about what your needs are, whether it's window treatments, whether it's furniture, um, outdoor furniture, whatever the case might be. We talk about you and, and uh, ask you lots of questions about what your design goals are. So while we're visiting with you, we, go, we, you, we ask you to take us on a home tour so we get a sense of the space and maybe get a sense of your style. And then from there, after asking all these wonderful questions that we do, we'll come back to our studio, which we're in, in the studio here. Um, and we have a working studio. We do not have a retail store, but our working studio, <clears throat> we'll come in, we'll come back. We'll start working on a design plan for you based on all the feedback that you shared with us. And then we'll put together a presentation, meet with you and show you all the wonderful things that we've selected based on what you had shared with us. And then once we agree to a plan and we go forward, we'll take care of all of the ordering, we'll take care of the installation and coordinating, shipping and the receiving and checking the products out to make sure everything is right. And then we actually have re reveal day. So it's that HGTV, uh, HGTV moment. So we get to come in and make everything beautiful and you hopefully cry and we all feel really good about it. <laughs> good cry anyway. So how have we been working lately? Because we've got a new normal that's happening and a lot of states are on, on lockdown right now. So we have really been taking advantage of that virtual consultation. Now, I had mentioned we have had clients who, have, uh, who are in some other states. So we've been utilizing the virtual um, design and virtual planning for probably 18 months or so. And so kind of now it's becoming a little bit more normal. It's a little bit different than e-design. You'll see online, a lot of people talk about e-design and they'll just do a quick little layout. But the, the virtual design that we do and the virtual planning is a lot more in depth. And we wanna ask questions and we wanna to get to know who you are, find out what your likes and dislikes are so that we can put together a plan. So here you'll see the pictures here, the before, this is a, a space that we did, a dining room that we did. And then we actually, we talked with our client, got some feedback. Here's the virtual design plan that was put together. And then here is the actual reveal. So you can see how similar the virtual design versus the reveal looks. So you get a really good idea of what your space could look like. So we've been doing that for a while and, and uh, we'll continue to do that. So if clients um, right now with the isolation, if they, if they wanna keep their projects moving, we've been utilizing this. Rachel actually had a couple of calls today and I've got some tomorrow with clients that we're, we're working on plans so that we can get things finalized and get um, the products ordered for them. So how we're different, we come to you in your home. Now, right now that's a little bit difficult, but as soon as, you know, if we know our clients are feeling healthy, we're feeling healthy, we would ideally like to get into your home to get a, an idea, of, get some measurements and whatnot so we can make sure that our plans are, are really appropriate, furniture is the right size and whatnot. But otherwise, when we come to you in your home, you don't have to go shopping, you don't have to go, you know, make mistakes by ordering the wrong things online. We'll come and take measurements and figure out what you need. As I mentioned, we ask you questions about your style, your colors, your preferences, um, and your budget. We want to get to know you because that's important to us. And design is really personal and it's not about what we like, it's about what you like. So it's important that we ask you a lot of questions and understand who you are, what's important to you, so that we can work all of that into a beautiful design plan for you. We're different because a lot of designers out there only have relationships with maybe four or five manufacturers. We actually have relationships with over 150 different suppliers and in all, whether it's flooring and lighting and um, area rugs and wallpaper and whatever the case might be that happens in your home, we've got the relationships with them along with um, uh, manufacturers in different price categories. So whatever your budget is, we can work around that to try to create a plan for you that is, that's beautiful. Um, our traditional model is we don't bill by the hour because if you're purchasing products from us, that's actually how we compensate ourselves. Because with our group, we, because we have, with Decorating Den, we've got over 400 designers. We have the ability to buy it wholesale, but then we, um, we will sell it retail. So you know, it's the same price as what you'd be uh, spending if you went to a furniture store, but you get the benefit of having us there to help you. 
Um, we're a one-stop shop. We bring the products to you so you get to see the sample. You get to see all of the beautiful fabrics um, right there, right in front of you. We bring it right to you and show you the whole plant so that you can see and touch and feel. And then we, the best part is for you, we coordinate all the installation and service so you don't have to. And right now I have to say it's kind of a nightmare with the whole Corona thing happening and the shipping and uh, plants, you know, working either half time or, um, you know, it, it's, it's a lot to coordinate. So, but we take care of that so you don't have to worry about that. So we try to create a nice stressful, uh, stress-free experience for you. Here's some of the services we provide. Furniture, whether it's upholstered goods or case goods, accessories, arts, you know, statues, lighting, lamps, chandeliers, custom draperies, custom bedding, custom closets, blinds and shutters and flooring. And so you can read the list here, but we basically, if it's in your home, we can do it for you. So we're an end-to-end -end service. Um, we also, at Miller Design Group, also do remodeling. Um, we don't do full-on new construction, but we, we do have several. Uh, we do a lot of remodeling, whether it's kitchen remodeling, basement remodeling, bathroom remodels. So we do those as well. We can help you. So, okay, now let's get to the good stuff here. So why you all joined us. So um, thank you for indulging me. And with my shameless commercial, we have to put that plug in for who we are. So, okay, we want to talk about creating a productive and inspiring home office. And, you know, I, I, as I talked earlier, the social distancing and this work from home idea is really, really, um, I mean, it's at least going to be a part of our life for at least the next 30 days. Let's hope that's all it is, maybe a little bit longer, but the world as we know it has changed quite a bit. More and more people are working from their home or even if they're, even if they're retired, they like to have a home office because they want to have a spot to communicate with friends and work on projects and whatnot. And, so it's important that we create a space or find a space that's really inspiring to us. Otherwise, we could be unmotivated and, and just maybe not as productive as we normally could be. So what we're gonna talk about here is, actually before I flip to the next slide, we're gonna talk about things you need to consider when you're putting together that home office. And then, um, then we'll talk about the fun colors and accessories. And so we'll talk about some of the fundamentals, the basics of trying to find your space, but then we'll also, um, we'll talk about the fun stuff too. So when you're thinking about your space, location, 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 you know, you might already have a dedicated home office um, and if you do great, maybe it's not inspirational. Maybe it needs a refresh. Maybe it's, you know, just you moved a desk into a room and, and now it becomes your home office. Um, but chances are too, if you're, if you're working or if you're homeschooling or whatever the case might be, you're probably spending quite a bit of time, or if you're on quarantine, you're probably spending quite a bit of time either on the computer or in an office area. So you want to find a space that's going to, um, fit your needs, whatever those needs might be. And location is really, really important. Now, again, if you, you might already have a dedicated room, so we, we'll show you some pictures on how you can kind of inspire yourself. But maybe you're trying to figure out, I don't have a dedicated space right now, I'm at the kitchen table, what do I need to do? Where can I carve the space out? We're gonna talk about some of the obvious choices and then we'll talk about some that maybe aren't quite as obvious. So. Before you do that, think about, though, a couple of things. Consider the traffic flow and your ability to withstand distractions. So if you need to work from home, can you have the conference call? Can you, you know, do you need to really focus on what you're doing? If you're a number, you know, if you're an accountant or somebody who's working with a lot of numbers, maybe you need to have some of that quiet spot. Um, are you a person who likes to work in the thick of the activity where, okay, I feel better if the distractions are floating around? Or do you need to be tucked away in a quiet space? And then people don't often think about it, but just think about too the temperature of your space because that can play havoc with your ability to focus too. If it's too hot or too cold, you might not be able to focus. And, and so find a space that's actually gonna be conducive to what you prefer and what you feel comfortable with. So where do we find those spaces? That perfect spot might be right in front of you. So I love this picture. This is a, this is a, a great idea to take one of the most unused real estate pieces, spots in your entire home, which is that formal dining room, and convert it into an office. This is a fabulous dining room makeover. I love the fact that we've got 
you know, we've taken the space and actually what they've done is wall, added walls where those pillars were, which were normally the entry to the dining room. And then we've added the sliding doors here. So it really kind of tucks that whole space off and makes it a nice private office. It's right off the foyer, which is really great. We've got um, windows in there. So it's just the perfect spot to kind of um, carve out an office in otherwise unused real estate. Here's another um, dining room that actually you can see here was the center chandelier, but this was converted into an office as well. And what we've done in this case here is created these built-ins so that now we've got our workstations over here. And this happens to be a space for a couple of folks that are working in one spot. But then we've also got some nice seating area because of the square footage of this dining room. So it really works out nicely. Here's another one you can see, actually they've got the desk, which is along the back wall. This picture's kind of cut off here, but then you can see some seating chairs there. So if you're somebody who's working from home and you need to have clients over or friends over, or maybe you've got a little bit of extra space and you think it's kind of fun to put a, a couple seating area, a spot there for the kids to come in or your, you know, your husband or wife to come in and sit down. That's a great little idea. Here's another dining room. This was a long, a long dining room and what we've done here is we've created this bench seat um, so a nice little sitting area there we took the chandelier out and put uh changed and put the, this drum light over the desk to offer some more direct lighting and then the back wall we've got all these beautiful built-ins here so this is just a perfect little office space here's another spot too that a lot of people the unused real estate in your home take a look at it this is an unused um, area over a garage Right? So how many people, if your house, you know, if there's no other space in your home and you've got that space over your garage, this is a great opportunity for you to, not only in this case, um, we've got a desk here that we've added. We've also turned it into a guest room area as well too. So if you're a little bit cramped on space, don't forget about the over the garage area, but then also too, you may have a similar spot in your attic area. You might have enough space in your attic to create that home office. So. You know, you can get fun and funky with the attic and, and the garage spaces because it's away from the main flow of the home. So you don't have to be as conscientious about, you know, am I matching my colors? And, you know, do, does it flow with the rest of the house? Kind of go crazy and have a little fun with that. Um, another space that typically or, or oftentimes we see, um, see our clients using too is we need to work on that that guest room area. And if you can see, I don't know if you can see my mouse here, this is actually a guest room where we've got a Murphy bed behind these doors, which is fantastic. It's a great use of space because how often do we really have guests over, right? I mean, every now and then, but for the most part, this could be a wonderful office space 90% of the time. And then the 10% that the, the time that you have guests, you just drop the, open the Murphy doors, drop the bed down and you're good to go. And then, Heck, you don't even need to make the bed. You can close the doors back up. Here's another Murphy bed option. This is a little bit bigger of a space here. You can see the extra storage there in the nice desk area, but this works out really well to take advantage of the Murphy beds that are available, which are really, they're really, really popular. They were in vogue years and years ago, and now they're back and just really back quite a bit. Here's another different, you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but on the left-hand side, we've got built-ins, and instead of a full-size bed, we've got a twin bed here. So th in this case, because it's a smaller bed, we can leave that down, and that becomes like a little a nap area. You know, maybe you're working really hard and you need to take that afternoon nap. But again, a great use for a guest room space by, we've added some storage with some floating shelves here, really, really pretty. And then we've got the storage with the desks, but this gives us the opportunity to have two people working in the room at the same time, if we want to, or each has their own separate space. So um, another spot that you might think of is, do you have like a, a little, niche in your home, a little area that you go, my gosh, what am I supposed to do with this? Or maybe it's an unused closet. Um, 
which sometimes is hard to imagine that we'd have an unused closet, but you know, maybe we all need to embrace Marie Condor and clear out some of the extra clutter so we can find some interesting little spaces to create an office. And I love this space here with the desk just built right in and then the floating shelves. This is perfect. I mean, really how much more space do you really need? I like the fact that it's an inset space too. So if you're on that conference call, you know, you're projecting forward so your, you know, your voice, you know, isn't going to carry everywhere. So it's kind of a little bit more of a private space. Here's another a fun little space decorated really nicely with our herringbone wallpaper on the side and our shiplap um, back with the floating shelves. So this is a fun little space as well, too, that you can use for an office. Oh. Uh, another spot to think about, too, is if you've got a stairway in your home. Um, whether it's a stairway to the basement or it's a stairway going to a second floor, sometimes there's, you know, we've got some strange little alcoves that, you know, again, we say, what do I do? And normally we would have an entry table with a little chair here, which is typically what we would do. But in this case, we really needed to create an office area. And so this is a perfect spot that we can, we can sneak in an office. This is just a five foot table, so our office desk. So it's not too cumbersome, and that gives you the opportunity to have a little private spot there, um, you know, away from the family room and away from the living room, so you, you've got your little spot. I would say that if you are putting your desk kind of out in the common area, please make sure you're a neat person, because the last thing you want is to have company come over and have them see clutter all over. That, that might just stress you out in other ways. So, um, but again, if you have to, this is a great spot to go ahead and do that. To the left over here, we've got the same sort of concept here that we've got a little bit longer wall so we can sneak in two little work areas as well too. Here's one at the top of the stairs. Actually, I had a home um, when I lived back in Illinois that was a chalet style and that was the perfect spot for a desk. And it was it was a loft, um, kind of a more of a, oh, a lodgy A-frame type home. And so we had an open loft and that was a great spot to put a desk there. So here's an opportunity that you can put a desk. Typically those loft areas are great spots for this because there's not as much commotion or traffic. And then you have a nice view of what's happening, you know, down below and you're, you're away from the action, but you're still not out of the action. The other thing to think about too, is maybe you've got, a, um, you know, maybe you have a living room and a family room, right? So, what you might want to do is create like a multi-purpose opportunity. So we've got a desk here. You know, we've all got, uh, so many of us have laptops. So it's really nice that you can take your laptop and fold it in half and tuck it away so you can keep that off the desk here. But you can see we've got a desk here and then this is more of like a family room conversation area. We've got the storage for, um, for working over here in these drawers along with our bookshelves here. So it's a great little opportunity to um, create that desk space for you. And then, oh, I love this, this um, picture. This is actually brilliant because, you know, in Iowa, um, so many people have the finished basements and we all have that unused space underneath the stairway, right? What do we do with this, you know? It usually ends up being a closet. Well, maybe you have a bigger closet somewhere else and maybe you just want to have a little spot tucked away. This is absolutely brilliant. I love the look of this. We've got our nice dark um, walnut hard hardwood floors and then these beautiful built-ins here with the raised panel doors. Just, just a beautiful, beautiful clean look. So we've got, you know, it's a small L-shaped desk, but it's, it's big enough for the laptop and a keyboard. Um, we've accessorized it with the old fashioned phone there, which is kind of fun. We've got room for some open shelves and then that little, that small short area brilliantly used for additional storage here. So we can put files and whatnot in there. So I just love this basement um, office here. It's just without taking up too much space, it's a really nice office. Here's another basement office too um, that actually serves the whole family. We've got work area for the kids here, but then also we've got a desk here um, for mom so that she can work in the space here. And what we've done, rather than having a full blown desk that we've used, this is actually a nice sofa table. It's a little bit wider than normal. And we've used that as the desk there. And then to lighten up the space, we've got this acrylic chair.
that really keeps it kind of light and eerie. And then, okay, so if you have to, if you have to, if there's no other place in your home, which sometimes there isn't, so I get it, you've got the option of your kitchen. Now, again, you've got to be one of those people who maybe it doesn't have the conference calls or maybe you can take the conference calls from another room, but there are some really great kitchen options too. So if you've got your the built-in desk there, here's just a really pretty way to, you know, you can add some storage and keep your space neat and clean. Here's another way right by our slider here, which is, is so it's not technically, it's a part of the kitchen, but not technically part of the kitchen. So a little bit more tucked away than our version to the left. And we've got great storage solutions um, rather than cabinetry because we've got a budget here that we're working with. So we've decided to use some baskets here for storage. So, and then the bulletin board in the back here for notes. And then we've got our file drawers there. So just um, a great use of really small space. Here's some more for the kitchens. Um, nice little desk with a little ship lap here. And so we've got our cubbies, our baskets here to be putting our, our supplies and whatnot, but just a nice little option here. And here's another, it's a tiny, tiny spot, but um, it's another good little spot for an office if you need to have that. Um, now, lastly, I did want to talk about a spot that and sometimes if you have to, you, the only place that you have in your home is your master bedroom because maybe your, all of your other bedrooms are used, maybe there's no spot in your kitchen. I will say that with the master bedroom, you really want to avoid that at all costs because that should be your sanctuary where your mind starts to shut down. And it's really kind of um, confusing for us physiologically if we're working and sleeping in the same space. Sometimes it has to happen, but if you can at all costs, try to find another spot to carve out as your office. But here, if you've got a larger bedroom, you know, this is a nice little cutaway spot that you can add into your, your, um, your room and a nice little desk area there. If, you've, if you're fortunate enough to have a sitting room, I, this is, if you've got to have your office somewhere and it doesn't work anywhere else in your home, if you've got a sitting room or a sunroom off of your master, this is a great spot to put an office um, because there is a little bit of separation there. You know, you can see we've got our, our doors here so you can close that off if you need to. And then you've got a little bit of mental division of space. Here's another, uh, this is a nice open airy um, master bedroom. And we've gotten a little fun and funky with the desk here. So this is, um, this is just kind of a nice, a little more casual boho look. So what's important to research shows that the presence of natural light in professional spaces really has a positive effect on employees and their ability to focus and be productive. So when we're thinking about our spaces, make sure that you, can, you try to find, if at all costs, if you can find a spot that you can actually um, give yourself a view so that you can you know, see outside and, and see what's happening. And it, it's actually a great boost for morale. It's great, it, it, it helps with your creativity and your positivity because sometimes you're working so hard and you're in a, in a zone, you need to take that mental break and go, okay, all right, I, I just need to stare out the window for a second. So here's a couple of different fun ideas. If you've got a small office space, we've got this beautiful um, glass desk, which might not be practical for everybody, but it's in a small space. If you want to keep things light and airy, a glass desk is a beautiful way to go. And then because this is a smaller room, but we wanted to have some seating, we're also making this a reading area. So there, we've got this fun little bench, um, seating bench here so that you can sit and read and look out the window. So this is, you know, it's just a, it's because it's bright and light and airy, it's just a wonderful kind of inspirational area there too. We'll talk about how the color inspires later, but you can see the different layers of color here, which also are, are um, inspirational. Here in this situation, this is for a client who actually takes clients in their home. And so we have a smaller desk area here. Um, you know, it, the, the room is a little bit narrow. So we've got a, a narrower L-shaped desk and we've got some smaller chairs. But the nice thing is, again, we've got a window over to the side here to let in that natural light. And then it just, it, it's really uplifting and really conducive to 
thinking. Here's actually at the top of the stairs. So again, that loft area. Maybe the kids don't always need all the space, right? Maybe you need to carve out a little bit of space for you. This is a great spot um, at the top of the stairs. We've got some windows here, which is fantastic. And then our desk here, um, actually, so our desk, we're actually facing out into the room, but then there's another chair across, a couple of chairs here so that if the kids wanna come in and sit down, um, they can actually be a part of the conversation, check in at the end of the day. Here, a couple other really, really beautiful spaces. The one on the left is a second story office, beautiful kind of bay window. Um, and just, you know, when you're in the treetops, it's like being in a tree house, just a really beautiful space. Same thing with the, the right, now this is a first floor, um, more of our, um, it's a modern home. And then so actually having the windows placed right here is a perfect opportunity um, to bring in that light. And then we've got our storage solutions up top and then on the side here. So I mentioned storage. So when talking about storage too, that's off, depending upon the space that you're looking at, you, storage is a really huge consideration. Um, and if you're somebody who tends to be buried in their, their, you know, under papers and whatnot, you need to make sure that you find some of those storage solutions. It really helps you to kind of keep your brain straight and, and just also, if you're somebody who ideally likes to have a neat home, storage is really important. So let's take a look at some of the different storage options. What you could do, and again, it, everybody's space is different. We take a look at um, our floating shelves that we've got here. And this is a great storage solution for you. So this is a small office that actually does double duty. And what we can do, what we've got here is a bed, um, a little, uh, you know, twin size bed, but we've got storage underneath and we've got a small desk area, but then we've got our file cabinets here. And then again, our floating shelves. So this is just a great space, very, very neutral. We'll talk about the impact of color in a little bit, but this is a nice space with good storage solutions given the area that we've been given. Here's the space to the right on contrast is just very bright and vibrant, but we've got all of these built-ins here. So if you've got an opportunity to do some built-ins, I would absolutely do them. Um, it's a great way to get everything all you know, hidden in one spot. There's a multitude of sins that you can hide behind these doors. So. <laughs> um, if maybe you don't want doors though, maybe you like the idea of bookshelves, right? And so here we've got this all filled out with some accessories, but what you could do in fact is on these shelves, you know, they've got really pretty baskets that are available out there. You can put, whether they're colored baskets, so you can add some pops of color um, on these shelves or, you know, the natural woven baskets that you can put on the shelves too, but you can use that as storage rather than having lots of accessories. To the right, these credenzas are fabulous for storage and you can see all of the fun little drawers that we've got here and then the sliding doors. So it can be hidden, your storage can be hidden in a, like a really pretty piece of furniture and nobody has to know all of the junk that you've got behind it. We won't tell. <laughs> and then Think about multi-function, multi-purpose um, opportunities as well too. So here over to the left, you know, if you're taking a look and you need to have some storage space, take a look at the trunks that are available and that can be used to, to store your files. So this is a great way to put all of your, you know, hide all of your paperwork away in a trunk and it looks like a beautiful piece of furniture. So, you know, we've got the wooden trunk to the left and we've got the padded ottoman to the right. And once that lid is shut, it looks like something you can sit on, put your feet up on, and it's a great way to hide all of the, um, you know, your paperwork again, things like that that you need to that you need to store. Of course, we've got our classic two drawer file cabinet here, the chest that we normally see, or you can go ahead in a closet area. Now we've got a safe hidden here, but um, you can also uh, do some built-ins in a closet. So at my house. Um, what we had in my husband's office, which I have let him decorate on his own, you know, and it's cars and, you know, stuffed ducks and um, hunting and fishing and all sorts of guy stuff. So I'm like, oh, that's your domain. You can do whatever you want to. But in the closet in that room, so we actually took one of the spare bedrooms and turned it into an office. And so we've got shelves in built into that office area so that he can keep 
everything off the desk. The desk looks neat and clean and everything is hidden in the closet. And all I have to do is just shut the doors and walk away. So here, you know, if you've got that as an opportunity, go ahead and, um, and, and build some shelves inside the office if you can't have built-ins anywhere else. Okay, and here's some other ideas for storage. You know, the built-ins here. Um, when you're thinking about doing some built-ins, you know, if you need a cork board or a whiteboard or something like that to put notes, don't forget that charging station too. That's really important. You can see over on the right-hand side here, build in some of those cubbies. And you can also look at how the printer is built right into the drawer. So again, some really great ideas so you can tuck things away and they don't have to be seen by everybody. And I have to point out the beautiful, fun little chandelier here. Again, that's, you know, that's got to make you happy when you walk into your office space and you see that. So storage and organization are two different things, right? So storage is, you know, you're putting all of your stuff away, right? And you want to keep that all neat and organized, uh, all, all hidden behind the door. But you want to organize your stuff that you're putting into storage, right? So since um, we're many of us are utilizing video conferencing now and um, with all of our, our work that we're doing, and even the kids are doing video conferencing for schooling, we want to make sure that our background, our, our space looks neat and clean and organized, right? I mean, the last thing you need to do is have somebody tell you, hey, you know, my God, you have a messy desk. Or um, I was talking with my sister and she said she was on a conference call and actually somebody had commented on one of her coworkers' draperies that they had in the background. So thank goodness this person was neat and clean, but they were talking about how beautiful the setting was that they were working in. So make sure that your area is organized uh, because nobody wants to look at unmade beds or a stack of dirty dishes. So here are some solutions here that you can see. Here's just a pretty, I mean, I love this room. How inspirational is this room, right? We've got, and you know, our neat, our desk here that's neatly organized with that view that we talked about. We're going to be talking about color in a little bit, but look at all the storage solutions that we have here with our hutch. And we've got um, all of the fun little, um, the, you know, our, our boxes here, we've got our woven baskets down below. So just some really great storage solutions. This easy breezy, you can go to any home goods store or whether it's Home Depot, Menards, Lowe's, whatever, and you can buy these shelving and these wire baskets there. I have to say in our studio here, we've got a big, um, beautiful work table that my husband made and we use these wire baskets. We've got them stacked up for each one of our clients jobs. So it's a great way for us to keep organized. Take a look at the, the um, you've got your uh, stacking trays. So again, just simple, simple ways to keep yourself organized without having to spend a lot of money. <clears throat> again, the built-ins, you know, just another great way. I love the zebra chairs. That's fun. And again, if you've got cubbies too. So cubbies are another way that you can go ahead and use some storage here. So we've got storage under the bed, we've got storage on the side, and then we've got these beautiful cubbies. So um, one question, or actually one of the things too, when we're thinking about space, I wanna stop sharing here for a second um, and actually go out to, um, if you're on video conferencing at home, there's a tool like for, um, for Zoom, you can change your virtual background. So right now, this is legitimately our background that we're looking at here, right? So let's just say you're, if you don't have time to organize and your background looks horrible, you can put yourself in Hawaii. Yay! <laughs> or you can pick a beautiful, fun, hey, this is my living room. Or here's my kitchen. Or... You can do, oh my gosh, I'm being attacked by a giant dog. <laughs> so you can have fun and put yourself in the middle of the St. Patrick's Day Parade, or um, for those of us in Iowa, the Bridges of Madison County, you can put yourself there and then, let me see, and put yourself in the middle of a NASCAR race. So if you want to hide the background behind you, um, you, there's oftentimes an opportunity to go ahead and change the background with um, myself in outer space. Ah, <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> so now I'm back to where we are. I'll go back to the screen share here. And that's where we're at. And I'm going to share. Here we go. Okay. So quick question on how do I take care of my cords? Somebody had written into us ahead of time and asked, how do I take care of the cords on my desk? This is not 
you know, it's not an uncommon problem, especially because so many of the desks that we're seeing now don't have drawers and we like to float um, our desks in the middle of the room. But most of the time what happens is we end up putting our desks against a wall because we've got outlets. And that's so because we don't like to look at the, the cords at all. But if you've got built-ins or if you say, no, I wanna float my desk in the room, Here's a couple of different ways that you can, you can do that. So we've got our picture here of the, a, a desk that you can see. Um, first of all, you're gonna need to identify which outlets you're going to use in your space, right? So is it on the right side or the left side of the room? And you're probably gonna to wanna to position your electronics to closer to the side of the outlet that you're going to be working with. So whether it's in the center or off to the right or off to the left. The other thing that you can do too, because the reality is we're going to have, we, you know, a lot of us have laptops and we can charge those on the side and then put those on our desk and work on that. But if you're somebody who needs to have a monitor and wants to have a monitor on the desk, the reality is, is you're going to have a cord. So if you've got an open desk, like the one that we're seeing, oftentimes they're not drilling holes, you know, it's it, for the cords to fit through. So you're going to have to resolve or, you know, it just understand that you have to have a cord running across your desk, right? So one of the things you can do is decorate around the cord like we've done here. You can see, you know, we've got a vase and we've got another box. So just not a lot of accessories, but just enough to kind of hide the cord of the monitor that we've got. Then what we want to do is we want to determine the path of the cable. So in this case, as we look at the picture, it's going to be coming out over on this side. What you can do, and actually what we've done in the office here, because I hate cords too, my husband actually took and he wrapped the cords around our desk. And oftentimes, lots of the desks will have these lips underneath them. So you can actually mount or screw your, like your, um, a power pack underneath the desk. So you can wrap your cord underneath, tie things up underneath there, and then plug in. So you can see, monitor from the cable to the top of the desk, and then we've plugged into a surge protector. And then you can mount that with either you screw it in or you can use the heavy duty Velcro, which is a really great option. Um, and then you can see the monitor cable, you know, it's packed, folded, zip tied, all nicely and neatly up underneath the desk there. Then we've got the cable here that's, we've got only one cable because we've got one surge protector and everything's fed into that one surge protector. So then you, all you have to do is worry about one cord coming down the leg uh, and I'll show you that picture in a second, down the leg of the table. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead. Now, this isn't the best look, right? <clears throat> Ideally, if you've got a darker desk, this could be great. Or there's also different color um, cords and different color zip ties that you can use. So you could go with a lighter cord, you know, a white cord or a gray cord um, probably would have looked better here than the black. <clears throat> but since this is the back leg, this is the only, the only cable that the person using this desk is going to see. And then what we've got is we've got our, um, our other um, extension cord down at the bottom here. And we've had to, I hate to say it, we've got to cut a little um, spot in the rug here and then feed that out over to the wall. So is it, the best solution, you know, your best solution is going to hide it against the wall, but this is one way to go ahead and do that. So I just want to make sure we had somebody write in for that. So I want to make sure I address that for them. Um, hopefully that helps. And if you've got any questions, we'll ask that at the end. So let's we'll quickly move along here because I want to make sure we've got time for Jill. The next thing we can talk about are some desks here. Everybody's pretty familiar with desk styles. We've got our traditional style, which is the simplest, which is actually what most people, a lot of people are going with nowadays. Um, you know, as we like the pretty lines and we like to float those in the middle of our room. Um, we've also got L-shaped desks here. So these are great. Typically we'll end up against a wall. Um, those don't typically float in the middle of the room um, just because, um, you know, you, you want, if you're gonna float a desk in the middle of the room, make sure that the back side of it is pretty enough to be facing out into the room because you don't want anybody looking at an ugly, you know, cardboard back. So um, there's also the lift top desks. There's desks with hutches. One, a couple that we don't have shown are the U-shaped desks, which are typically used in larger offices or a T-shaped desk, which is actually a great 
opportunity if you've got a uh, great desk to use if you've got two people who want to use either side of the desk. So here's just some of the desks that we can use. Chairs. All I'm going to say about chairs, and Jill's going to talk about this in a little bit, but um, as much as we want beautiful chairs, um, really, really should, from an ergonomic standpoint, is think about um, form over, I mean, function over form, right? We want to make sure if you're going to be sitting for a long time that you've got a good supportive chair that's ergonomically correct, kind of like, you know, this white one right here is a really great one. This chair, beautiful as it is, it may not be comfortable for sitting in eight or 10 hours a day. So think about how often you're gonna use your, your desk and, and pick a chair that's appropriate for what your needs are. Lighting, I'll move quickly through lighting. All I wanna say about lighting is, lighting is really, really key to your office area. Lighting can actually change your mood if it's not bright enough, if, um, and if you're not getting enough light, it can cause eye strain too. So, from an ergonomic standpoint, make sure that you've got enough light in your space. So think about, we always like to think about layering lighting, starting from the ceiling. So you can have fun with this. You can have put a beautiful, fun chandelier in your office space. And it's just a great way to, <clears throat> pardon me, to express yourself. The lighting manufacturers have done a fantastic job of coming up with some fun, fun ceiling lights. Then you wanna layer, so we've got our, actually I should have said, We've got our three sources. We've got our natural light. We've got our overhead light. And then we've got our table lights, you know, our desk lights or our floor lamps. So here's just some fun, different ideas to add some personality to your space that you can add to your desk. And here you can see in these two pictures here, we've got our, on the right hand side, we've got our natural light layered with our overhead light and then our desk light. And then here we've got our desk light and then our, I'm sorry, our chandelier and then our, our overhead and our, our desk light. There's a window off to the left hand side, which you don't see in this picture. So, okay, fun, 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 color. And I will move through this fairly quickly. So Jill has time here. Um, color, when you're choosing the color for your room, it absolutely does matter. So, you know, if you're gonna spend a lot of time in one particular pace, place you don't want to be surrounded by you know boring beige and that actually could start to impact your work so Forbes has said that um, you know Forbes the magazine has said that if you know if a fresh coat of paint could make all the difference in your productivity level and in your psyche so make sure that, that you go ahead and you find a color that's going to be inspirational for you and so we'll talk about what those colors are so for example this um, white grays and ivories, which the, the grays have been so popular. Um, if you're somebody who has trouble focusing, white gray and ivory are a great option for you to use in your space so that you can focus on the task at hand, um, especially if you need to focus all of your attention in one area. Here's another gray office that you can take a look at. This is such a pretty little space here. So white, gray, and Ivory, if you're somebody who needs to focus on other things and don't want to be distracted by colors. Green and yellow. So green is more of a natural color and a gradient of the greens and yellows will give your space an organic feel, which is great for focus. Um, yellow is an attention grabber, so make sure that you're using the right yellow and it's not too vibrant. So, you know, you're not using the neon yellow, but again, if you need focus, this is um, you know, this is a great, green's a great color to use. Here's another green um, office area, which is kind of fun. And this one is a soft greenish yellow. And this one has got a lot of personality and look at how vibrant this is. So this is, you know, we've got our adult space on the right hand side. And then on the left hand side, we've got our kids space. So this is a multifunction office, but it's got a lot of vibrancy and a lot of color there. Um, so very, very energizing. Red, okay, so red is the most aggressive of all colors, and red will give your room energy, but it may produce, it, in some cases, it produces some strong emotions, so it's recommended just to use it in accents. I have to say, as I was putting all of, you know, the presentation together and reviewing the slides and adding things in, when I came to putting in this slide, I actually, and right now, even when we got to it, I almost felt my heart race a little bit. So this for me personally is a lot of red. Um, I, 
I mean, I would be like, ah, you know, I'm needing to, <laughs> um, needing to have like, I, I wouldn't be able to have my coffee in the morning, that's for sure. But if you're going to use red, use it as accents too, because it could be very overwhelming. So on the right-hand side, we've got accents of the red. And on the left-hand side, while the walls are red, we've got enough white to offset it with the built-ins. Um, so that's a, a good use of it. Purple. Purple is um, a great color that actually signifies creativity. So if you're somebody who's in a creative field, purple is a really great color and there's lots of shades of purple. So um, we, I'm showing some darker purples here, but it's just a nice, um, actually this, this dark purple with the, the white trim, I think is just very, very striking. Then we move on to our blues, right? So blues, greens, and violets, these are the relaxing colors. Um, so they can help you if you have a high stress job, kind of calm down. Um, but if you go too soft, too baby blue, you know, it might kind of put you to sleep. So this actually is a great pairing of blue. This is the Pantone color of the year. So we'll talk about that in just a second. But here's just some beautiful, beautiful um, blues. And if you were on our workshop last week, you heard about Sherwin-Williams, the color of the year being navel, which is actually um, shown here on the right. Just such a great color. And it is the blue is the new neutral because it's calming, because there's so many other colors that work so well with blue. It's a great color to be using. Now, you don't have to paint your entire room blue. You can do uh, one wall of blue. Oops. So... Also, if you don't want to paint, there's wallpaper. Wallpaper is a great option. So we're showing you some wallpaper here. And this can be fun and energetic. You know, we've got the, the fun uh, floral on the left and we've got the geometric on the right with our blue wall. We've got that fun, uh, you know, that, that green that helps to give us focus, but then we've got our calm gray and white as well too. And then if you want to get a little funky and fun, you can always do a wall mural. Now, I think if I had this on my wall, I'd probably be wanting to <laughs> go on vacation. I would have a hard time focusing. But still, if this is soothing for you, this is a great way to go, right? Um, here you can do a mountain scene. There's, this is a faux brick background. That's brick wallpaper. And this actually, what I think is fun is it's, it's for somebody really creative. We've got our greens and we've got our purples. That is wallpaper. So just a great way to make your home look like a library, but just have some fun with it too. And this, if you're a world traveler, I love this wallpaper. I think that's just really fun. I love maps. So perfect. All right. So we are just about done. Let's talk about decorating to inspire and motivate. We want to wrap all of this together, right? So we've talked about location. We talked about storage. We've talked about um, organization. We've talked about the function of our desks. We've talked about our chairs. We've talked about color. Now we need to kind of accessorize to pull all of that together. So maybe you feel like I'm not willing to go with a painted color wall. I want to stick with the white, the, the whites, the grays, the, the ivories. You can bring in your pops of color through the accessories that will help finish off your space. So some accessories that you're going to want to think about is if you have that extra occasional chair in your office space, grab a throw blanket, right? And put that over the top of that. Or you, you undoubtedly will have some books or files or something like that. Find some interesting kind of character type um, bookends. And then think about your vases, think about your statuettes, things like that that you can do. Don't forget that greenery because we wanna make sure that we've got a view. If you don't have a view, having some sort of plant in your space is really gonna be a great way to kind of add a little bit more of that outside nature and bring that in. Have fun with fun, vibrant, bright artwork too, to inspire. And then whether you have the occasional chair or whether you have a desk chair, you can always throw a fun little pillow in that has some bright colors here. And this is a cute little pom-pom pillow that you can add to your desk. And it's just um, a great way to kind of bring it all together. So here's some of the spaces pulled together for you. You can see from an accessory standpoint, we start with our rug here. We've got some desk accessories and then we've got accessories in our storage area in the back. It just creates a beautiful space. I love the space to the right as well too. So we've got that traditional desk and we've got our chair, but then we've got our storage ottoman here, our bookshelves, right? Our uh, bookcase. 
And then we've got some beautiful mirrors and our overhead lighting as accessories, as well as our table lamps. So this and draperies to add some, some interest to the space. So this space has it all. <clears throat> Here's a before and after for one of um, the clients that we did. And, and um, this was her office space before. And then we came in and this is her office space afterwards that we did. So we've got our desk and our chair. We've got our rug. We've got our bookcase behind with accessories. We've got another bookcase here and we've got that all um, put together with a side table and lamp. So we've got actually some really fun, uh, a great space there for her that she loved. Here's another office space that we did too. And just add, don't be afraid to add some personality. Um, we've got this, this cow chair, this cow hide chair, which is just so much fun. Beautiful, big artwork, nice floor plants, interesting little accessories and lamps. So we've got our layered lighting happening there. And then we've got our extra storage area with accessories as well too. Here's another space that actually is very inspirational. We've kind of got that aqua blue, which is just fun and vibrant, very creative. And then we've paired that with that green for focus and inspiration along with the cream, clean, crisp whites. So, okay, I kind of buzzed through that quickly because I want to make sure we get a chance to get to Jill here. Um, and so hopefully those ideas gave you some, um, some ideas of what you can do in your own home space. And again, we'll have this recorded and up on our YouTube page if you want to watch that. Um, but I'd like to introduce Jill Eggert here. She is personal trainer movement specialist with Inspiring Wellness, and she's going to walk through the ABCs of stretching here. So Jill, okay, I will let you take it from here and, uh, it's all yours. All right. Hi everybody. Wow, I love virtual communication because we get to stay connected and learn about beautiful businesses like yours. You gave us so many great ideas. You know, I, my business here is in my basement, literally. So it's important to me to have color. I have a window well over here with all kinds of, I change it every holiday. So it's inspirational to me and to my clients. So when you're literally in the basement, you have to use color and all the great ideas that you shared with us, Karen. So. You know, when we're sitting around, I was just sitting in this chair and I was forward like that. You talked about ergonomics and it's so, our posture is so important. You know, now we're all sitting at home and sleeping. Some people are sleeping a lot more because you don't have to get up because if you're not working, you're sitting in front of the TV, doing a Netflix um, run of your favorite shows or you're in your jammies and we're always sitting forward like this. So I just want you guys to sit up nice and tall and open up right here. So I'm gonna talk about the ABCs of stretching and movement. And you know, exercise is so important because it helps get our happy hormones going, right? Cause you know, it's kind of stressful right now and we're all feeling a little overwhelmed and maybe a little depressed. So the first part of our um, ABCs is action. So we want you to take action to move. Movement is medicine. Go outside, get some sun, walk around, play games with your kids. You know, we want to get our muscles moving. And, you know, <laughs> I, have, I have a watch that tells me, you know, Jill, you've been binging too much on the telephone. Get, I mean, on the uh, television, get up and move around. Some people don't have watches like that. But in order to keep yourself um, accountable, set an alarm on your phone. So, you know, if you're working from home, you're conference calling, and uh, or you're homeschooling with your children you just want to get up and move around maybe every couple hours get up and do you know two or three minutes of movement so you know they're saying at christmas time we're eating a lot because we're partying a lot but now we're home and we don't want to gain any corona weight at all so action is the a of the of the day don't wait until now <laughs> and i like that dynamic movement you know, there's three different, there's multiple different kinds of movement. Dynamic movement is moving around like this. So you guys just move around a little bit. Get yes. your, those, of you at home, those of you at home, get up and do this. You've got to yes, do this. Yes, yes, yes. So static stretching is when you hold and then there's PNF stretching, but I like dynamic because it gets your heart rate up, it gets your lungs going. And there is a thing called sit syndrome and sit syndrome is like really when you're sitting, all the muscles in the front of your body become tight. Your wrists are flexed, your elbows are flexed, your chest is tight, your hips are 
are bent and everything in the back is stretched out so you're tight in the front, shoulder problems, back problems. So we wanna avoid the sit syndrome. So the A is action and the B is breathing. So when we're in this position, the sit position, we're crunching our belly and our lungs. So we're not getting a lot of oxygen. And Karen talked about focus with color. Oxygen also gives you more focus. So just take some big, big breaths. Expand your lungs. Because a lot of times when we're focused on our work and, and we don't take deep breaths. So getting oxygen into your body and this virus is um, a respiratory virus. So the stronger you can keep your lungs, the better chances you are of staying healthy. My other thing is I have clients that have had a stroke. I am, do neuro rehab and they don't move around a lot. So I created an exercise with a balloon for them year, a while ago. But I wanted to share that with you because it's a great way to um, strengthen your lungs, create fun. And if you're homeschooling, you know, you can play this game with your children. So you're basically just going to blow the balloon up, which might, some people have blown balloons up in like years. <laughs> yeah, water balloons, maybe. <laughs> I'm going to blow it up. And let it out. And do that four or five times. And you feel your lungs are expanding and contracting. And then once it's blown up, then you can create games. At rest, um, you can you know, you use it for hand-eye coordination with your children. You can use it for recess. You can use it for yourself for a challenge to stand on one leg and bat it around. But using the balloon is a great way to strengthen your diaphragm, strengthen your lungs, and create fun for your family. So a lot of us have been, with this um, stay-at-home order, we've been doing a lot more FaceTiming. because so I've been FaceTiming with my mom. And when we do, we like have a dance party, you know, getting active, which is the A, and the B is breathing because you're getting your heart rate up. So we want to make sure that, you know, just sitting there talking to your family, an hour could go by. But maybe just put a little post-it note up on your little iPad and say, hey, let's get up and just move around and do some stretching. And the other part of the B is the back of the body. Remember I said you're, we're always in this position and the back of the body is weak. We want to open up. So the B is for breathing and back body. And the exercise, the movements that we're going to do in a second are really going to be to open up the front of the body and contract the back of the body. So that the A is for action, B is for breathing, and B is for back body. And the C is for challenge. And I know you guys are probably like, Jill, you're or challenged enough here. But to challenge yourself in a good way, you know, challenge your kids and give them stars if you if they're active throughout the day and give yourself a star if you get up and move like two or three times throughout your work day. It's just a great way to expand your lungs, your muscles, stretch them out. Our ligaments and everything get tight through here. Your bone, your muscle is supposed to be as long as your bone. And when you're in this position, everything gets tight through here. And then you reach back and you're like, oh, my shoulder hurts. Well, why? Because everything is super tight. So we want to make sure that we're expanding and opening. And the dynamic movements I was telling you about help get your heart rate up, strengthen your lungs, get oxygen into your muscles and nutrients. All right, so now we're gonna get moving. So if you'll join me, grab your kids if you want. And when we're in this position, you know, and we're doing the dishes and writing and on the computer, we wanna stretch your wrists out. So if you guys wanna stand up with me, stretch your wrists out and reach up as high as you can and you reach over to the side. So you're gonna stretch from your hip all the way through the side of your body, out through your wrists. And think about pushing out through your wrists. And then come to the middle. And then again, breathing, breathing out. And breathing in. And breathing out. Now I was going in circles a little, I was gonna show you to go in circles, but I got a little dizzy. So we'll just go from side to side. Just maybe 10, 15 times to each side. You know, sway a little bit, add a little bit of fun, turn some music on. Jam all the Side to side body bends. And now another one I'd suggest is um, arm circles. Now we're not gonna forward circle because we know that we're always already, we're already tight here. We're gonna open up round circles backward. So if you can get your palms behind your body, that's even better. And in your mind's eye, think about squeezing those back muscles. Opening up, stretching out. So you're stretching the ligaments and the tendons and the muscles here. And it'll prevent injury and shoulder problems. So circles, big circles, breathing, opening your chest up. 
feel your heart rate going up a little bit. <laughs> okay, so shake it off. And the next one, I like this one because it's a rotation. Normally we're in one plane, forward and back, but this is a rotation. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see me. I'm literally gonna push my hips forward. Push my hips forward. Bring my elbows up a little bit above my shoulders and just kind of drive my elbows back. So you're working those rear rotator muscles. So soft knees, squeeze your butt, drive your elbows back. Maybe 10 or 15 times and just really breathing and contracting and opening up that whole front of your body that you've been contracting the whole time when you're sitting. This is the back, the B, the back of the body. The breathing again too when you're exercising because a lot of people I know myself included too that sometimes I just end up holding my breath which isn't the right thing to do. Yeah so usually when you're going through the hardest part like breathing out and in and out and in and when you're circling just take deep breaths think about opening and expanding and the first one that we did the side raise you'd want to breathe out in the harder part it's easier to come to the middle breathe out in the harder part all right, so now this one is really good to extend the front of your body as well and contract the back. So you're gonna go into a little bit of a squat, stick your butt out, put your hands by your side, and then reach up and try to go up onto your tippy toes because it's a good way to work on your balance too. So you're gonna go down and do a little bit of a squat, stick your butt out, and then reach up as far as you can, kind of go onto your toes, make sure you try and balance yourself, and then come down. Again, 10, 15 of these is a great way to get oxygen into your body and move your joints through full range of motion, which is really key to preventing injury and pain. Excellent. Now my last one is cat and cow. Some of you know that from yoga or Pilates, but it's a great way to loosen up the lower part of your back. So I'm gonna just put my hands on my knees here, stick my butt out and just round my back up and then push my belly button down and round my back up and then push. Now, so you would want to breathe, breathe out and then breathe in and breathe out and then breathe in. All right. I hope you guys feel loose and relaxed and God bless. Thank you for having me, Karen. All right. Hey, thanks, Jill. I appreciate that. And you know, it, it truly is so important. And Rachel, you know, since we talked with Jill about um, doing this for the workshop, Rachel and I, since Anita's on quarantine, um, because she's not, she doesn't have the virus, but her husband's a healthcare worker, so we just don't want to take any chances. So she's been at home just to keep us safe. But um, Rachel and I, we've been trying to remember to get up and like, you know, and actually we've had the 80s dance party music on, so we've been... <laughs> Well, set your alarm to remind you on your phone to remind you can set it and every day it'll go off at any particular time and that'll help you know hold you accountable absolutely that's a great tip and thank you so much now what i do want i want to put in a plug for jill um again i mentioned at the top of the the meeting that jill has like kind of been a master and almost a pioneer in the the virtual um, training. So if you're somebody who is stuck at home and or somebody who's looking for a personal trainer, Jill is phenomenal. So whether you're in Iowa, whether you're in Illinois, whether you're in Wisconsin, wherever you happen to be. Um, hey, hi. We do virtual training together too. All right. That's Kayla. Hi. Hi. Kayla. Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So if you're looking for somebody to help you out with the training, Jill also does nutrition coaching and, and um, as well as what aromatherapy. Tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. So if people want to get in touch with you, her number, I'll share the screen here again so you can get her information and then Jill, you'll still be in the corner. Yeah, well, Inspiring Wellness is really, um, we came up with the name because we just want to inspire people to be well. And if it means physical exercise or nutrition or, you know, we do aromatherapy to help calm. I've done a lot of aromatherapy using it for all of my clients now during this stressful time. So basically we, you know, just do whatever we need to do to help our clients be well and balanced and healthy. Yep. Great. So if you want to get in touch with Jill, here's her information here. 
um, or you can um, email us and we'll go ahead and we'll make sure we get you connected with Jill. But I have done a virtual training with Jill and it is amazing what she can see. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you guys know I can see you, right? <laughs> you need to fix your form a little bit. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. She can, if she, oh God, I didn't even know things that I was doing and she was telling me I was doing it wrong. So <laughs> in a nice way, of course, but anyhow, so thank you, Jill. And I really appreciate that. And it's really important now to just being physically active and moving and what, especially while we're sitting. So the ABCs, the ABCs. So what I want to do is I want to put it all together for you guys. Um, we want to set ourselves up for success in our office space and be inspired. Um, so what does your dream space look like, right? So think about it. What, what do you want that space to look like? Do you have a best location in your home for that? Whether it's in, you know, over the garage, whether it's in your kitchen, you know, whether, whether it's that dining room that never gets used anyway, right? Create a focus and give yourself a view, right? Think about a design scheme that encourages organization and productivity. So make sure you've got storage available and think about the necessary things you should have on your desk that'll help you to be more productive so that you can get to what you need to. Color matters. That's really, really important. So think about the colors that are important to you. And again, if you don't want to commit to a color on the wall, bring those vibrant colors in or the inspirational colors for you um, in through your accessories, through the artwork that you have maybe, or the area rug that you put on your floor. Also think about, we didn't talk about it, but think about experimenting with your furniture layout too. So whatever space you've got, you know what? Desks, everything is really pretty mobile. So if you've got to move it around so that you can create that view, go ahead and move your furniture around so that you can create that view that's going to inspire you. And then lastly, we want you to take care of yourself. Think about what Jill just talked about, the ABCs of movement. So make sure you, you're taking action. Just get up and move. Breathe and the back body. Make sure that you're doing some of the stretches there. Um, you know, maybe you don't have kids. Maybe it's you, you and your husband or your wife or whatever the case might be. Um, both of you get up. And even if you've been sitting watching TV, get up and, do, and move. Take a 10 minute break, right? It doesn't have to be sitting at a desk. And then challenge yourself. So um, one of the challenges that I've had during this time, I've been kind of off of my workout regime. And I know Jill would um, beat me up for that because I'm not being as healthy as I should be. But I just actually, for the last month, I've been doing 200 sit-ups a day. And this last week, I started to do um, 100 squats a day. And I can feel it in my booty already <laughs> that hopefully... <laughs> I normally have a flat backside. Hopefully we're going to get some shape back to it. So keep your body moving. Okay. All right. Well, the last thing I want to let you know, what do we have coming up next here is, and actually you can see the scenery behind Anita. This is one of the outdoor spaces that we did. So we want to talk about our um, beautiful outdoor spaces that we're creating. We're coming into that season. I know in Iowa, we're going to have snow overnight, supposedly. Um, so we're not quite there yet to bring the patio furniture out, but that will be hopefully coming soon. So last year we did lots and lots of outdoor spaces. It was a lot of fun, but we, um, we actually, this is the time of year to get that going again. And we're going to have a workshop in two weeks, right, Anita? What's the date of that? Yep. Two weeks, the 16th, April 16th. So you, um, for those that are here today, you'll receive an email, um, tomorrow that has all the information so that you can register for the outdoor space workshop in two weeks from today, same time at 6.30. Yeah, so hopefully you can join us, tell your friends about it, tell your friends about this workshop, or if you missed our color, um, your the uh, color trends workshop from last week, again, we've got that on YouTube. We'd love to have you go see it. And um, we are actually offering for everyone who is a part of our workshops now at, during this whole quarantine time and the stay at home order, we are actually offering the um, a $500 off any, any $2,500 purchase. So we can put that towards your purchase of whether it's outdoor furniture or um, interior decorating and whatnot. So just kind of our gift to you. Thank you for participating in the workshop. And um, Anita, I don't know if there were any last minute questions or anything like that. Um, if anybody has questions, go ahead and you can hit the chat button or you can hit the Q&A. Um, you're all also unmuted. So if you wanna just ask a question, feel free. Um, you might have to actually unmute yourself, though, because a couple of you have muted yourselves. 
Okay. I think we're good. All right. Well, you have our email address. Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great evening. Stay healthy and make sure you move. All right. Take care. <laughs> thanks. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye. All right.